Splitting up a monolith is not a simple task, but it can be done by defining boundaries and carving off capabilities into its own service. Along with this comes issues of communication and data storage. I'm going to explain at a very high level how all this works. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So this is a crazy big topic, but I just want to cover at a high level and give a very small, simple example that I can illustrate with some of the slides that I'm going to use to how things get split apart. So I have this place order controller that has a dependency on a sales context for database. It takes a dependency on this shipping service and a dependency on this payment service. Then when our HP request comes in, we're going to call this action here where we are creating our record in our order table using our DB context. Then we're using that shipping service to create a shipping label. And you can see here, I'm starting a transaction with that database. And ultimately, the shipping service is a part of that transaction because we're passing it through. Same thing with the payment service here. Uh, we're calling built order. That's probably going to do some payment processing. And we're giving it the transaction as well. And then we're committing it. I realize this is a very small example, but the idea of that this thing is doing more than one, just creating an order. We have it creating a shipping label and billing. And this may be something where we actually want to split apart. And I'm going to show how that would work. So in that code example I showed is that I have a lot of things going on and you can relate this to your own projects if you have a monolith. And I'm simplifying things here. But the sense is that you have a monolithic code base that has a lot of interdependencies and you're talking to a primary database. Yes, you may have other infrastructure, like maybe you have some read replicas or maybe you have um, a separate cache. That's besides the point. Really, the fact is that you have all this code that has that's doing a lot of inner in-process communication between dependencies within them, whether you're using interfaces um, or not. That doesn't really matter. And then they're all talking to this primary database. So really, the end game for me, if you really want to split a monolith apart, is we want to go from here to here. And what I have here is kind of the end game, but there's a lot of steps in between to get to here. So I'll kind of describe what some of these are. So the first thing to really kind of define here are boundaries or bounded contexts within your actual monolith. I have a series on my loosely coupled monolith, I call it, that shows kind of how the project of structure of this works. But it's to basically having project structures that have particular functionality within a given project. Now, how you define and figure out where those boundaries are is a whole different topic. But for the sake of my example that I have in my loosely called monolith, what I really have for it is I have the concept of sales, which is a particular project, a warehouse and billing. And you can probably guess if I was working on an e-commerce application, what those would be. Sales is for orders, warehouse is maybe for shipping and receiving, and billing is probably for processing credit cards and payments for those orders. So just like the code example that I had where in sales I had to place order and it was referencing the warehouse and billing, that's just the reality. You're going to have all these dependencies within your monolith. And what you need to do is figure out what these boundaries are and once you've defined them and what the dependencies are. What do you depend on for the service that you want to, the boundary that you want to carve off? What do you depend on and what depends on it? So for the example of the sales, let's say we wanted to carve off sales. Well, the first thing that's going to have to be eliminated is any of that in-process communication because we're going to move sales out of process won't exist. We won't be able to do any of this. So once we move that sales piece out of process, how do we call everything in warehouse and billing? Well, my first step would actually still be using the database. So you'd still be connecting to the same database so that all your actual data behavior, all that type of stuff, data access stays the same as a first step. And then what you'd have to do is, if I jump back over to the code, is that you could keep this the same. It's just that this particular shipping service, you would change its implementation so that it's not actually calling anything in process anymore. You'd have to replace this with something like HTTP, or gRPC, where now you're going to be doing a remote procedure call to the other service. Now, let me clarify this is that to me, this is an like intermediate step. I do not think you should stay this way because it has a lot of implications, specifically with dealing with fault tolerance and availability. But I do think this is, is an option, is moving everything to remote procedure calls 
But ultimately, I think where we're going to get to, and I'll show this, is asynchronous messaging. So the next step after you have that in place is to now carve off the particular pieces that sales needs in terms of data into its own database. We don't want to have the shared database. The idea is that you're going to be having a database essentially per service. So sales is going to have its own database and its own behaviors and everything that it needs to own will live in its database. So again, there's a lot of work here because if you have a lot of random queries, for example, that were previously happening and things that were say billing or warehouse related to things that are in sales, you need to create new APIs that you can basically fetch this information out because you're not gonna be via an API because you're not gonna be able to have billing directly communicate or connect to the sales database. You're gonna to have to do this through APIs. So the last step in this mix is getting rid of this synchronous communication and moving to asynchronous messaging. So that means getting rid of these RPC calls that were happening back and forth and rather publishing events and messages to a message broker. And that's how you're gonna communicate asynchronously through services. Why do you wanna do this? There's a ton of reasons. I recommend checking out my defining services boundary talk. I'll have a link in the description. And it's really about autonomy and you want these things to be autonomous, hence why they have their own databases, hence why they define all their own capabilities. And preferably, you're gonna be communicating asynchronously. So once you've carved off a piece of functionality capability, there's really nothing stopping you from taking repeating that cycle to other parts. So here now I have sales, which is its own separate boundary that it's its own service, the warehouses, the billing is. They each have their own databases and they're all communicating via a message broker. So now the thing becomes, well, if I step back to that code that I had where I was calling everything in process, how would that work in kind of this message driven and event driven architecture is really what we've moved to. So really what we had here is we kind of had this process of creating an order, creating a shipping label, creating um, our payment or billing our order, and we had this all as one particular process that was all in process, but because that's all in separate services now, and we're using asynchronous messaging, the way that works in to find kind of these processes, these business processes or workflows are things like sagas. So what I have here is I'm, I have that same controller that was creating a new message called place order. And when that happens, I was adding my record to my order database. And now what I'm doing is I'm publishing an order placed event to the message broker. And within my order uh, sales context, that's what's gonna kick off the saga or the process. So what's gonna happen now is my saga is gonna see, oh, an order was placed. Well, now what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna send a message to the message broker to say bill order. And the billing side is gonna pick up this message, bill our customer, and return that the order was billed. When we see that the order was billed, then we send another message to the message broker called create shipping label, which our uh, warehouse side will pick up and it will then return a shipping label created. So we know at that point we can mark our order as uh, ready to ship. So that process now that was all kind of uh, synchronous in process in our monolith, now we're just exchanging messages back and forth with the message broker to kind of complete that process and our saga is what allows us to do it. So visually in a kind of a diagram form, that's what the, here's what this looks like. So if you watch the videos I did on sagas, the, these slides will look familiar. And if you want more details, I'll just cover it really quick. But in code, what happened was we placed our order that happened to our orchestrator, our saga. We picked up that event. We then submitted, uh, published an order bill, which billing picked up. It came back saying the order was billed. Our orchestrator then sent a message to create the shipping label and the warehouse then said that the shipping label was created, at which point we told sales, okay, we're ready to bill at that point. Splitting up a monolith is not an easy task. Depending on how you have your current monolith set up and if you have boundaries defined and between those boundaries, if you're using interfaces, like I said, you could start at least doing RPC in between them. Although I'm still kind of on the fence whether I'd even go that route, to be honest with you, but it is an option that a lot of people seem to take. If, you would, if you're familiar with messaging and you just want to skip the RPC altogether and go back, go directly to using messaging and sagas and event handlers and a message broker, that's probably where I would jump to depending on the situation. But again, it all depends on your project and how 
loosely coupled you are to begin with or how coupled you are to begin with and what the dependencies look like within your monolith. So hopefully that gives you some idea or some thoughts on where to start. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please again, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on software architecture and design.